everybody, this is Joe Workman, and I know you've probably checked out all the other Jack videos, and this is the last in the series. This is on all of the great hover effects that you can do with Jack. Um, with Jack 4, we've separated out all of the hover effects into its own separate stack. So that you actually have to, if you want hover effects, you add the Jack hover stack to uh, the page. So let's jump in and show you how to do it. So here we are in the Jack hover demo page. Um, and as I've said in all the other videos, you can download this project file from the Jack doc portal, as well as you can get it from the disk image that you used to, when you purchase Jack. Okay. Now, the Jack hover stack is actually a separate stack that you add to the page. So if you want to add um, hover events, you need to add your Jack stack the way that you install it the exact way that you want. Um, view all the other Jack videos to see how we've styled um, things this way. Now, if I want to change anything about that Jack stack when you hover over it, I need to add this Jack stack into a Jack hover stack. Now let's look at the Jack hover settings. You'll notice at the top, we have um, animation speed. So you can define the speed at what the animation is and then the easing effect. So um, as you play with these, you'll see exactly what these easing effects do. Um, probably for a lot of things, linear would make sense um, and ease in and ease out, um, but they're basically how things are timed. They're timing functions. Just in general, if you want to hover have hover effects for any of the Jack settings, you need to enable that settings section. So in this particular instance, I want to enable hover layout. So I need to check, um, I wanna change the layout settings on hover. If you look at uh, border, I don't have this checked. So it doesn't matter what settings I have here, they're not gonna be used because I do not have enable hover border. Same thing, if I, if I don't turn on hover background, that the background is not gonna change. Same thing with shadows. So it is important that if you want settings to be um, changed on hover, you need to enable them inside Jack hover. Now, another thing, once you enable Jack hover, all of the settings that are shown inside this, in this example, Jack hover layout, all of these settings are going to basically be used on hover. So if I don't want to change the padding on hover, I need to make sure that on hover, the padding is set to be exactly the same as the normal Jack stack. So let's look at what this Jack stack is. This particular Jack stack has a padding set to 10%. It has a minimum max height set of 100, 100. It has flexible to browser set to 25%. Now let's see exactly what Jack hover is set to. Now, if we look at the, uh, the Jack hover settings, we'll notice that there are a few options not showing. Um, you can't change, you can't go from, let's say static height to proportional height um, inside Jack hover. But if you wanted to go from static height to static height, you could. So that's why some of these top settings for uh, flexible for width as well as height options only contain values that are animatable. This particular stack, um, we'll notice that the max height on hover is set to 140, but everything else is identical. Therefore, when we hover over the stack, it's going to animate from 100 pixels to 140 pixels. Let's see that in action. So as you see, as I hovered over this height stack, it is animating from 100 pixels to 140 pixels. And the same thing can be done with all of these width rotates and even the skew thing. Now I'm not gonna go over each and every one of these. You see the concepts. You set your, your base layout that you want inside Jack and then whatever you want changed needs to be inside Jack hover. And the same thing applies to borders. If I want to uh, increase the border size on this particular stack, we'll see that 
if we look at borders, I have my borders set to three pixels, 99% um, opacity, round corners 3%, okay? And if this, we'll notice that my border is animating to 10 pixels. Or if we look at this example, which is pretty amazing, we animate the actual border radius. So deep by default, the jack stack is set to be 50% border radius, which will give us a circle when we preview the page. But on hover, we're animating that to be 10 pixel radius. So I'm sure you've seen this demo. When I hover over this, the border radiuses change to be a circle to a rounded rectangle. And on this one, I'm animating both the border size and the opacity. The same thing can be done for backgrounds by changing background images, changing the opacity of a background, hovering shadows, changing shadow values, so that pretty much does it for Jack Hover, right? Um, I didn't go into all the examples because the concepts are exactly the same. If you want to hover um, if, you know, various styles on Jack, you set your base Jack to be the exact styles that you want. Then you insert it inside of a Jack Hover stack where the any deltas need to be changed inside that Hover stack. Now, if there are values, again, that you don't want to be changed on hover, you need to make sure that those values are also set inside Jack Hover, is if you have that particular settings group enabled. So I hope that you use these hover effects. Um, I hope you don't do too crazy things with them. I, I've seen some pretty ugly things with hover. So um, keep things subtle. I think subtlety is, is very good. So um, I hope you love Jack. Again, the more you use it, the more you'll love it, okay? And it really is an indispensable tool um, that you know you use on pretty much every web project. So thanks for being a great value customers. Um, go forth and make your websites great. Thanks everybody. Bye.